Thanks for being up with it here at 6 a.m. And Stella, we've been talking about how much things are evolving right here. We have mm -hmm. things opening up, things that could be turn, you know, uh, shutting down here. And we're learning new things, you know, as the hours go by. So we're trying to, you know, uh, decipher it all and pass it along to you as soon as we learn those things. Yeah, and we're now officially on the watch list. So yeah. good morning to you. Speaking of that, let's get right into our headlines. We begin with this. This is our top story. San Diego County officially on that watch list. And it comes as we reached a record 584 new coronavirus cases, making it the sixth day in the past week that we've gone above that 400 case threshold. News 8's Netta Rompoy is live in the county administration building with more on what this means. Good morning, Netta. Yeah, we surpassed another record. Uh, of course, these are numbers we don't necessarily want to see, of course, throughout San Diego County. And as you said, that puts us on that watch list. So now the state is watching San Diego County numbers through the weekend. And this means if we continue to see these rise in numbers through the weekend, then as early as Monday, many businesses will be impacted. They'll have to close down their indoor activities. So we're just days away from the state really taking that same enforcement action that it's already taken with 19 other counties. All of the rest of Southern California counties do have this pause on indoor activities that will last them for the next three weeks. And then here in San Diego, for the third day in a row, we've posted on average more than 100 COVID cases for every 100,000 residents. And that's what put us on that watch list. In fact, yesterday, the county reported a rate of 112 positive cases for every 100,000 residents. So if the these numbers remain high and we stay on the watch list today, tomorrow and Sunday, then beginning Monday, dialing back enforcement action will be taken. So what does that mean? Well, shutting down the indoor operations of restaurants, wineries and tasting rooms, movie theaters, card rooms, family entertainment centers, museums and zoos. So those are all the impacts uh, that we would see locally. The potential restrictions do follow San Diego's recently re self-imposed closure of bars and that newly instituted 10 p.m. curfew for local restaurants. Also, yesterday, Governor Newsom urging Californians who are heading into this 4th of July weekend not to gather with people outside of their households, avoid crowds if you can, and uh, the statewide statistics are continuing to climb. In fact, they rolled out a new series of PSAs designed to encourage everyone to follow the statewide guidelines. See, evidence is simply overwhelming. Uh, masks keep Californians healthy. Of course, if we've been saying this over and over again, but if you do go outside, keep your mask on, especially if you are close to other people. They really want you to maintain that social distance, though. But this weekend, you can expect pretty heavy crowds all over town. San Diego County, by the way, did report a record 10 community outbreaks, and that brings the one week total now up to 22 outbreaks. Eight of the latest outbreaks were reported in bars and restaurants, and that's certainly uh, something county leaders want to let restaurant owners know that by as early as Monday, we could be talking about a change in their operations. And that's the latest live here at the County Administration Building. Back to you. Netta, thank you. And as coronavirus cases are climbing here in San Diego, we are getting a closer look at how young adults in their 20s and their 30s make up the largest group of cases. So people in the 20 to 29 year range account for over 3,200 cases. 30 to 39 is the next biggest demographic. 29-year-old Carly Andres, she tested positive for COVID back in May after experiencing muscle aches, chest pain, and shortness of breath. I have no idea how I got it, honestly. I think like a lot of other people, we took it really, really seriously for like the first six weeks and then did start loosening up, spending some time with some friends. While young people may not be as likely to wind up in the hospital, they still run the risk of transmitting it to someone who will. And police are looking for a hit and run driver who killed a pedestrian in Choyas Creek. This happened just before 1 a.m. We're told a man was walking on Choyas Parkway when a speeding car hit him. He died at the scene. Police described the car as a racer type vehicle with a loud muffler. It was last seen driving south on the 54th Street. Call police if you have any information. Now to your morning rush. SDSU says it has now completed its investigation into the 19-year-old student who died falling from his bunk bed following a fraternity party. SDSU police submitted their findings to the district attorney's office based on evidence that Dylan Hernandez was illegally given alcohol last November in the incident. The district attorney's office will not be filing criminal charges against anyone involved, but the university says they have opened an administrative review of potential student misconduct. 
A young woman is recovering in the hospital this morning after a freak accident in Scripps Ranch. We're told she was trying to hop over the fence at her apartment complex when she fell on one of those spikes of the fence and it went through her calf. A friend who was with her held her up until first responders could get there. She was awake and she was talking, but she appeared to be in considerable amount of pain, which is understandable, right? Firefighters say they actually had to cut part of the fence off and leave it attached to her leg as they took her to the hospital. Cal Fire crews quickly gained control of a fire just off the 15 in North County last night. This one broke out around 5 p.m. near the southbound lanes at Gopher Canyon Road. It grew to about a quarter acre, but firefighters got a handle on it within about a half an hour. No one was injured in this, no buildings were damaged, and the cause of that fire is still under investigation. The iconic Balboa Park is reopening today for the holiday weekend, and that's where we find Chris Grow live with the very latest on what we can expect as far as safety measures go and what is being offered. It's kind of interesting that Balboa Park is actually opening up when we're hearing about a, a lot of places starting to close. Good morning, Stella. Yes, and that's something that they are monitoring at this moment. In fact, joining us right now is Peter Kamiski, the executive director of the Balboa Park Cultural Partnership. And uh, Peter, Stella was just saying that, of course, as we're seeing these reopenings, we just found out San Diego County is on the county watch list. You told us earlier off camera, this is something you guys are monitoring. Yeah, so Chris, the numbers certainly don't look great. Um, and we're well aware of that. But I think we're, we're, we're ever hopeful that this is, can be controlled um, and that we certainly just want to make sure that while people are able to experience the museums in Balboa Park uh, with their masks, with the appropriate distancing uh, and being very careful because that's all these museums care about is the health and safety of their guests and their team members. While that's possible, we want to encourage people to try and do that. And can these museums and restaurants close, reopen? Uh, do they seem to have the, the blueprint, so to speak? You know what, had you asked me that three months ago, I would have said no. Um, but I think they've been closed for a while now. They've all been working on their reopening plans. Uh, and so all of these organisations know exactly what it takes now to be able to open and close um, as the requirements hit. And I think that's probably what the guidelines have delivered of, of, a, of a, a benefit, um, that not only are they all uh, very, very careful places to now come and visit, uh, but they also really have those plans in place. And so we are looking at, obviously, additional museums reopening. Um, I know that at the 5.30 hour, we were talking about everybody feeling safe and making sure that they follow the proper precautions. But there's also some good news coming out of this. Uh, for instance, the Explorer Pass program is going to be restarted now that we have a lot of these museums reopened. What should people know about having these museums and restaurants reopening and what will change if they're a regular visitor here? So the, one of the amazing parts about, about the majority of museums being reopened is people can now visit Balboa Park in its entirety. So we've had uh, three museums that have been open for a while now. Uh, Japanese Friendship Garden, Automotive Museum, Air and Space Museum. All of those except the Balboa Park Explorer. The other seven that are opening today and tomorrow also accept the Explorer. So people can experience all of those cultural organizations with just one ticket price, whether that's the great annual pass or the day pass or the, the, uh, the limited pass as well, or the uh, park-wide pass. Okay, well, Peter, thank you guys for joining us so much here today. We really appreciate it. And obviously, best of luck here to the reopening thank that will you. be occurring this holiday weekend. And obviously, again, guys, as, we, as you just heard there, starting today, going into tomorrow, we're seeing several uh, reopenings occur. The majority of the museums Museums will be reopened here at Balboa Park. Go to our website, cbsa.com. Click on that story link to see the full list. Stella, Eric. Chris, thank you. Rising coronavirus numbers aren't stopping people from getting out for the holiday weekend. News 8's Limor Abrams shows us the growing crowds already at local beaches. Take a look. From the ground, these beachgoers only appear to be tightly packed together. Look from above, many are keeping their distance, whether at Mission Beach. We just expect everyone's wishes as well as our own. Wind and sea or La Jolla shores. We take care of ourselves and stay away. San Diegans getting the message. People are, are being uh, pretty reasonable, I think. Even Pamela Boynton of the La Jolla Shores Association relieved to well, see. More people are wearing masks, that's a good thing. And then I'm noticing uh, that they're respectful of moving around and keeping each other. Uh, allowing each other to have some distance. But just before the official July 4th holiday. Slowly it's been getting busier and busier, but 
This is pretty, this is a lot of people. There's concern that more visitors will crowd city beaches because they can't go to their own. In my opinion, it would be better if the beaches were all open and then it would kind of prevent some of that congregating going on. That congregating is just what California officials are hoping to avoid, announcing Wednesday the full closure of all state beaches in Los Angeles and Ventura counties and restricting parking access until Sunday, July 5th. Seems like a good thing just given how crazy it's been. We met many tourists here for a quarantine escape. Gopal Anand bringing the whole family from San Jose. It's worse out there, sitting at home like for four months, three months. Uh, I think this was a welcome break. Lifeguards, meanwhile, not anticipating much of a break anytime soon. There's a lot of uh, out of state flags and college hats, you know, football season kind of hats and stuff. So there's a lot of people here and it's only going to grow. Lamore Abrams for News 8. And a reminder that most beach parking lots in the county are now officially closed. And a reminder to drive responsibly this weekend. Local authorities will be cracking down on impaired drivers this holiday weekend. It comes after agencies saw an uptick in DUI arrests earlier this year. The Sheriff's Department says deputies will be out conducting increased DUI patrols. And tonight in Sanitas, they'll also be holding an impaired driving checkpoint beginning at 8 o'clock. A reminder that the city of San Diego has canceled this year's Big Bay Boom fireworks show. But if you're looking for something to do, we invite you to stay home and stay safe by joining us for the only live televised legal fireworks show in San Diego. The CW San Diego celebrates the 4th, can be seen at 9 p.m. on the 4th of July on the CW, all from the comfort of your couch. You don't even need to get out there and drive around, right? So just hang out and watch the big booms right on your TV screen and your big booming surround sound system. There you go. What's better than that, right? <laughs> <laughs>